Ready? So this is chapter nine, and um, it's not a completed chapter, like I said, because there's certain things I'm still working back and forth in these things, but it'll give you another big, big idea of what it's about to evolve. So, okay. Chapter nine. When it comes to heads of state on Atlantis, the Imperator's closest counterpart is Arevictet Heru, the Farikon of New Deshre. Asin mentioned it to me earlier, and now I'm about to meet this high-ranking individual for myself. The monitor screen is activated once more, and Asin and I watch the Archeon Imperator of Atlantida make a call to the opposite side of the planet. There's no apparent temporal delay, and the screen connection goes live showing the face of a very old man with very dark river red clay skin wrinkled and dried into parchment. In stark contrast, his long hair is white and pulled back in braids, or as I see later, segmented tails. His black eyes are narrow slits among the wrinkles, but his expression is alert and shrewd. And in its resting state, his face is as disdainful as that of the Imperator. <laughs> Unlike the Imperator, the Farikon is formally attired. He wears a wide Egyptian-style collar of gold and dark gemstones over a robe of ja or a jacket made of an expensive-looking glass fabric. And behind him, I see some kind of dimly, dimly lit, uh, lit opulent chamber indicating evening. Romutat Cassiope, you are late, says the Farikon of Nusret Shred in a rasping old man's voice speaking Atlantel. As soon as he speaks, it makes sense why he might require vocal assistance. At his age and apparently frail condition, the Farikon is probably barely able to sing, much less execute complex voice commands properly. Shioku nutos, Arevictet Heru, Romutat replies in an overbearing, arrogant voice, the type I've heard him use in public during court assemblies. And then he continues several, uh, speaking several more words in a foreign language, which I assume is the Deshi language. I glance at Asin, who watches their exchange and gives me a tiny nod of reassurance. The formality is over with the Imperator switches suddenly back to Atlanteo, then English, and casts a negligent look at me. This is my son's new Gebi bride. She is responsible for yesterday's disruption, but it has not been corrected. Immediately, the Farikon turns his attention to me. I feel a complex scrutiny of his curious black eyes upon me. This girl is Gabby, the old man says in Atlantel, and then switches over into slow, accented English. From Earth? You are from Earth? How are you the Imperial Bride? Yes, yes, the Imperator interrupts him. That's another matter entirely later. For now, I require <laughs> you to check the situation on your end and confirm that the raw disk has been stabilized. The Farikon coughs harshly. <coughs> and takes in a deep breath before replying. He doesn't sound healthy at all, it occurs to me. Require all you like. You will wait now, he says at last, regaining his voice. I waited all this time, so now it is your turn, Cassiope. <laughs> the elderly Farikon grunts, lifts up a wrinkled bony hand drowning in a white sleeve and moves into view a second mech arm monitor, similar to the one here. I can see him turn it around so that we all have some inkling of what's on his second screen. And it's another live feed, this one showing a dark evening scene outside. In it, an immense, bright, artificially illuminated gold disc, a convex hemisphere embedded upright against the hillside, shines in high contrast against the barely visible panorama of indigo mountains and star-filled sky. The Farikon issues a spoken command to someone off screen and we observe someone else's hands take over, and then a young boy sounds, girl or boy, it's hard to tell, singing, then speaking in Deshi quietly. Then the second screen di display begins to zoom in on the raw disk, and soon the golden metal takes all of the view. As it does, the golden surface is suddenly visible up close as the camera makes contact with it. I strain to hear any kind of humming, any buzz of vibration, but there is none. Ah, so quiet. Farikon says, visibly relaxing. Good, it is silent once again. The raw disk sleeps once more as it should. Perfect, the Imperator replies. Then our business is concluded. Neferonictus Heru, you need your rest. But the old man shakes his head casually, pushing the second monitor screen away so that he can dominate the view once more, pressing forward. In that close-up of his deeply lined clay-colored forehead, 
his nose with its, nose with its prominent bridge and flattened nostrils. He's reminiscent of an ancient Mayan king from Earth's Mesoamerica. Not so fast. I want to know what the other news you have for me. What of the Rahqua sightings in deep space? Do you have updates for me? Where is your son, the commander of Space Pilot Corps? Or is he no longer the one in charge up there? Well, speak up, Cassiope. <laughs> he is here, as you can see quite well, the Imperator replies, glancing at Aeson and beckoning him with one hand. Talk to the Farifon. Tell him what you know. Aeson moves in closer and slightly inclines his head in a curt but polite acknowledgement of the other ruler. Shiofu nuotos, Farifon hero, he says in a composed voice. You have the most recent report from the SPC. Nothing new since. Nothing? What about their activation of the rod disk and your own grail transmitting who knows what kind of rogue signal for a whole day, Commander? The Farikon says to Aeson in a voice that now quakes with irritation. Have you checked the sky since? Have you sent your scout ships into deep space today? I'm told you have been busy with your new ride. Not enough to neglect your SPC duties, I trust. <laughs> The Imperator draws closer to the screen once again. We've been rather busy with the games, or did you forget, Hero? This is game season. All of Atlantida is consumed. Yesterday was supposed to be over, but because of the unfortunate incident my son's bride caused, the conclusion of the games has been postponed. The betting halted. Now the final ceremony must take place as soon as possible, or they will riot. I don't understand, the Pericon says. What exactly has the Gerbi bride to do with the incident? How did she cause this disruption? What happened? My bride was a contender in the games, Aeson replies with a grim expression without looking at his father. What? But how strange. I said Hero's narrow slits of eyes widen momentarily despite the surrounding border of wrinkles. Why would she be in your games? Who allowed it? It was a wedding gift, I say suddenly. The chance to be a contender in the games was a generous gift bestowed upon me by the Imperial Sovereign. During the final tiebreaker event, I used my voice to lift the thing which I thought to be the Grail Monument, unintentionally activating the ancient ship. I didn't know what it was naturally, or I would never have. You broke the master lock with your voice? <laughs> the Coricon addresses me in his carefully measured English, and now the intense gaze of his shrewd eyes is boring into mine. You have a Logos voice? What are you? How is that possible? Only a Logos voice can break the Imperial oral, oral block. I'm Gwen Lark, a refugee from Earth, I say. I'm told that I have a Logos voice. Yes. Not sure how or why or what any of it means. The Farikon shakes his head in incredulity. So, you survived Atlantida's annual feast of blood, <laughs> slaughter of the talents, the best and brightest. Yes. And I won, and now I'm a champion. Hmm. The old man pauses, considering me in silence. He then turns away and focuses on the Imperator. A stupid risk, Cassiope. What kind of ridiculous logic permitted a young, talented Gebi woman with a precious Logos voice to risk herself so needlessly, especially when she's your son's chosen bride? Ah, uh, stop playing your favorite game of ignorance, Hero. The Imperator replies. As usual, you already know. You always know more than you admit. The Farikon makes a sound that is either a snort or a chuckle, but his expression does not change its severity. I've been hearing rumors naturally about all of this, not the Logos voice part. That part is new. But all the rest of it, uh, as you can imagine, my sources are normally very well informed, naturally. But in this case, I must admit, I've had some doubts as to their credibility, so I had to confirm with you directly. And now I'm perplexed even more. Why? Why would you arrange this dreadful situation? What possible motives? You're still playing, the Imperator says with sarcasm. I only gave my son's bride what she had wanted for a long time. Her aspirations to be in our games are public knowledge. You should ask your sources for a library of old media feeds detailing the biographical circumstances culminating with the gift presented at its assembly in her honor. A splendid event. Such a generous gift, I interrupt, speaking in a hard voice while continuing to look directly at the old Farikon. Everyone glances at me. Aeson's gaze upon me is particularly intense. I see. And Evictet Hero says after the slightest pause, no longer looking at me. 
So this is your way of punishing your son and heir for his unusual choice of right. You're so transparent, Cassiope. So transparent in your malice. How predictable you are, Archeo and Imperata. Short-tempered and short-sighted yet again. Allowing your passions to rule you. Uh, the tendency of yours was your father's scourge. I remember so well. How he tried to mold your shape and temper your character to little avail. The Imperator leans in closer to the screen with a dark expression and his words slither like serpent. Go to bed, old man. And don't presume to evaluate my actions in your daft head. I will do as I please, as always, Imperial Snakeling. Don't assume I'm the only one who can see through your hot-headed grudge of a gift. The Imperial Court of Atlantina might close their collective eyes and your propaganda machine might make endless media feeds, but your people will see right through it. Enough! Romotat Cassiope cuts him off. If you have any other state business to discuss or questions for the SPC commander, proceed. Otherwise, we're done. In that moment, the same young voice sounds off screen, whispering in Deshi. Uh, wait, what? The Farikon says, turning to the young person in the room. He grabs and fumbles with the mech arm of the second monitor, returning to us the night view of the raw disk. And this time, the old man makes an angry noise for which no explanation is necessary. The previously silent gold disk is humming. I recognize that deep sound, the same sound that has been issuing from the grail. The Imperator curses furiously and immediately pulls up his own second monitor here on our end. He sings the initial command, then hand keys additional ones and the live feed of the Stadion Arena returns. In the now familiar view, the camera device still checked in the grail, surface again vibrates with a metallic buzz caused by the deep, profound humming coming from the Atlantis grail. The ancient arc ship is active once more, despite all our earlier efforts. Oh no, I whisper, and my hand involuntarily rises to my mouth. I glance at Aeson, who also looks at me, then stares at his father, who in turn glares at the screen close up. What? What is going on, Cassiope? Frowning at us from the other screen, the fighting clone of New Deshret speaks in a much steadier voice than he's been using for the last few minutes, which seems to indicate he's not as frail as real as he puts on. Aeson fixes on his father. Why is it active again? The Imperator curses once more a stream of Atlantea words, many of which I'm not familiar with. What, what is going on? What is it doing? He explains finally, bounding his desk with my fist and holding the monitor with the other. I reset the master lock. It should be dead. If you set it properly, why is it still active? The Farikan says with a tone of accusation. Are you sure you did the sequence correctly? The Imperator roars in reply. The Imperial Oral Block worked. It set it perfectly and everything went quiet. This should not be happening. Do it again. I didn't accept her has. Let Gwen do it, Aeson says suddenly. Let her do the whole king sequence. And that's how far I got. And, and there's some really, really crazy stuff to happen. But I figured we were so close to the end and you know, might as well give you the whole full thing. <coughs> now, the fact that um, they can't turn the thing off, it's gonna keep going. Oh, they yeah. can't turn it off. Oh my God. Yeah, and it's some, there's some other stuff that's gonna start coming out because it's active. Yeah. And there'll be things popping up, <laughs> shall we say.